I do know they nobody believed me back then. No one. Besides my mother, nobody believed me. I just wanted to get out and be with, be with my see, kids. In the world of justice, some moments touch our hearts deeply when innocent individuals, wrongly accused and imprisoned, finally regain their freedom. When these innocent convicts are set free, their reactions often reflect a mix of emotions, from overwhelming happiness to the way of lost time. In this video, we will see such seven reactions of innocent convicts when set free. But before that, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get regular updates. Let's get started. Number 7. Clemente Ware I do know they nobody believed me back then. No one. Besides my mother, nobody believed me. Clemente Aguirre, a 24-year-old man, was wrongly sentenced to death for a crime he didn't commit in Altamont Springs, Florida. Despite no one believing him, except his mother, nearly 14 years ago, Aguirre lived close by when a mother and her daughter were tragically murdered. He became the prime suspect shortly after being seen at the woman's house asking for beer on the night of the incident. Discovering the bodies, he tried to help but, in panic, fled home without calling the police fearing deportation as an undocumented immigrant from Honduras. Aguirre was arrested, convicted of two counts of first-degree murder, and given the death penalty. I didn't, I didn't do it. I don't kill nobody. However, nine years later, new evidence suggested DNA misrepresentation. Aguirre's lawyers requested more testing, which revealed that his DNA matched his testimony. He was indeed trying to save the victims. After enduring 14 years in prison, including 11 on death row, all charges against Aguirre were dropped. He expressed gratitude to the court and his team as he embraced his freedom, having been cleared of all charges. And I thank you for it. From the bottom of my heart. Reportedly, Aguirre is owed $720,000 by the state for the wrongful conviction. Number six, Davonta Sanford. So um, from this day forward, I'm just, just trying to move forward. In March 2008, Devont Sanford, a 14-year-old boy, was wrongly found guilty of four deaths near his Detroit, Michigan home. Even though Vincent Smothers confessed to the crime soon after, prosecutors didn't charge him specifically for those homicides. This led to a long fight by advocates for justice. Finally, in July 2016, Sanford walked out of prison as a free man. His case shed light on the complexities of the criminal system involving drug dealers, small-time criminals, and law enforcement. It showed how justice can falter, but also how wrongful convictions can be corrected. Despite spending eight years incarcerated for crimes he didn't commit, Sanford's conviction was overturned, marking a triumph of justice. His release on July 19, 2016, brought immense relief and joy. Sanford was thankful for everyone who tirelessly worked to restore his dignity. Devonta Sanford received a $7.5 million settlement from the city of Detroit after being wrongfully convicted. His story serves as an inspiration to innocent people wrongly accused worldwide. Number 5. Robert Springsteen This is one of the most significant things that ever happened in your That's life. That's what I keep trying to explain to you. If I was there and I partook in this, I would remember these things. And you do remember these things. No, I don't. Robert Springsteen spent nine years in prison and faced a death sentence for crimes he claimed he didn't commit in Austin, Texas. When he was 17, Springsteen and three friends were suspected in the killings of four teenage girls at a yogurt shop. Although the boys were initially considered suspects, they were released due to a lack of evidence. However, seven years later, one of the friends implicated Springsteen, stating that a 22 caliber gun linked to the murders belonged to him. This led to Springsteen's arrest, conviction, and death sentence, which was later overturned due to an unfair trial. While awaiting a retrial, further DNA analysis from the crime scene found no evidence tying Springsteen or his friends to the murders. Ultimately, all charges against Springsteen were dismissed. The court has signed these dismissals in each of the charges against these two defendants, Michael Scott and Robert Springsteen. But despite his nine-year imprisonment, he was not eligible for compensation as his release wasn't based on proven innocence. Despite his ordeal, Springsteen now finds himself a free man having spent years entangled in a case that didn't ultimately prove his guilt. Number 4. Clifford Williams I just wanted to get out and be with, be with my six kids. They was gone and it wasn't no better but them. Clifford Williams, from Jacksonville, Florida, spent 43 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit. He was wrongly convicted, 
alongside his nephew Nathan Myers, for murder and attempted murder despite having solid alibis and no physical or DNA evidence linking them to the crime. The survivors of the shooting wrongly identified them as the culprits. Williams, age 34 at the time, and Myers, 18, were arrested and quickly charged. They were found guilty, with Williams receiving a death sentence and Myers a life sentence. After 43 years in prison, a new investigation revealed that the ballistic reports didn't match the original testimony, which was the only evidence against them. Finally, the moment they had been waiting for arrived. Williams and Myers were declared innocent. Mr. Williams and Mr. Myers, the indictments have been dismissed against you. You are free to go, and we are adjourned. They hugged each other and their supporters. <laughs> the state compensated them with $2 million each for their wrongful conviction. Number three, Curtis Flowers. I look forward to uh, spending time with him and, uh, ooh, I just can't, I can't, ooh. Curtis Flowers, a 27-year-old man, was convicted of a quadruple homicide in 1996 and spent 22 years in prison before being exonerated by the Mississippi Supreme Court in 2019. His relief was immense after a long, tiring battle against the flawed justice system. Initially found guilty of the deaths at a Winona, Mississippi furniture store during a robbery where four people died and two were injured. Flowers faced inconsistent witness statements and overlooked evidence. The Mississippi Supreme Court overturned his conviction due to prosecutors unlawfully excluding African Americans from the jury pool. Since then, Flowers has been featured in documentaries, received awards, and advocated for criminal justice reform. His case highlights flaws in the justice system and the need for improvement. After 22 years of wrongful imprisonment, Flowers' tears of joy upon exoneration were a testament to his enduring fight for justice. Curtis Flowers was compensated $500,000 by the state of Mississippi. Number 2. Kevin Strickland Kevin Strickland, an 18-year-old African-American boy, was wrongfully convicted in 1979 by a jury that was entirely comprised of white individuals for a crime that occurred in Kansas City and resulted in the deaths of three people. The fact that there was no physical evidence that could link him to the crime and that a witness later recanted her testimony did not prevent him from receiving a sentence of life in prison. The conviction of the defendant was overturned by Judge James Welsh in 2021 due to the failure of eyewitnesses to provide reliable testimony. Strickland was finally released from prison after serving more than four decades in prison, making this the longest verified wrongful custody case in the state of Missouri. Even though his appeal was rejected by the Supreme Court and the governor did not grant him a pardon, his exoneration brought tears of joy to his eyes as he enjoyed his newly acquired freedom. The emotional release of Strickland spurred celebrations among members of his family, friends, and supporters all around the country, confirming that justice was ultimately successful despite the considerable odds. Number 1. Alfred Duane Brown In October 2005, Alfred Duane Brown a 21-year-old man was wrongly found guilty of a police officer's shooting and given a death sentence. However, a later investigation revealed that the prosecutors hadn't shared crucial evidence supporting Brown's alibi presented by his defense team. In late 2014, due to this revelation, the highest criminal court in the state overturned the conviction, leading to a retrial in Harris County. Finally, after nine years, Brown was released from prison as the prosecutors couldn't proceed due to insufficient evidence. The discrepancies in the evidence had cost Brown close to a decade of his life. When he walked out as a free man in June 2015, surrounded by cheers from loved ones and supporters, it marked an emotional day for everyone who had fought for justice during his trial. Brown, especially, felt the weight of this long ordeal. Nearly facing the death penalty due to false charges, his exoneration felt almost unreal. The prosecutors eventually dropped the case, acknowledging the lack of evidence for a retrial. He humbly stated that he could never repay the debt he owed, encapsulating his relief despite the immense difficulties he endured during those years. Alfred Duane Brown was compensated up to nearly $2 million for his wrongful imprisonment. That's all for now. Like and share the video and follow us for more such content. Thank you.